Hello guys and welcome to another one of my little videos. In this video I want to show you this new despecialized 3.0 task sheet and how it will be used in producing the next version of despecialized. Now I want to make the Empire Strikes Back despecialized version 2.5 first but while I'm doing it I'm already going to be using the uh, version 3.0 workflow for the shots that I want to replace in 2.0. As you can see here, I already marked some shots in progress and those are the shots that I mean to replace in version 2.5. Everything else will stay the same as version 2.0, but these shots I want to replace and while I'm doing them, I want to already do them to 3.0 quality. So you can actually go through the task sheet yourselves and check out what I have in store for version 2.5. Now today I also want to demonstrate how this task sheet will be used and what my new workflow looks like. So let's start with the task sheet. Let's say I want to do this shot, which is the first shot of reel 3 of The Empire Strikes Back. So it's already marked in progress, but you can see all these sources are marked not ready. So what I need to do first is prepare the sources. So let's go to Premiere here. And in Premiere, I already uh, pulled in all these uh, sources that I normally use. So let's take the first source, uh, which is the official Blu-ray. Now let's find our shot. So this is why I have these time codes here. So it's, uh, it should be very easy to find the shot. This is just for demonstration when I'm actually working on this. I'm first going to synchronize all the sources on the timeline so I can find all these shots because some of them are cut up into reels, some are com complete one file for the movie, like the Blu-ray here. Um, but just for this demonstration, let's just uh, go with this for a separate shot. So this is where it should be, there it is, okay. Now what we're going to do is file, export media, I already have a PNG sequence set here. And now for the export. Now see this is why uh, I have every shot numbered like this so that I can use this number and give, give each shot its own directory um, in the, uh, the Specialized V3.0 folder. So I've got this uh, ESBR sample where I already have all the subdirectories prepared. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this and rename it after this shot. Now I have all these pre prepared subdirectories in here. Uh, so I can go here. I already have the name of the shot copied. So I can go to this shot number sources, Blu-ray, and this way I'm going to have an image sequence that's going to be ready to work with in Nuke. Okay, now let's do the same thing for uh, the first 35 millimeter source. Let's 
let's unlink and delete the audio. We don't need that. And let's have a look. So since this is the first shot uh, on Real 3, we don't really need to search for it here. Uh, however, as you'll notice, A, of course, the shot looks very different than on the Blu-ray. Uh, but because this is at the beginning of the reel, there are some frames missing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the end of this shot right here. I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to synchronize it with the Blu-ray like this. Okay. Again, also because this is the first shot on the reel and the beginning of the reel is always the part that gets handled by the projectionist, uh, this, uh, this particular shot is extremely dirty. So it's going to be quite challenging to try and restore it to uh, the same quality as the official Blu-ray so that it fits in. Now see how very different it looks in the Blu-ray. It's not just uh, that these birds or whatever they are were recomposited. It's the whole matte painting was actually recomposited. Of course, after color correction, this is going to be a lot less noticeable, but uh, the Blu-ray looks very different. You can see there's uh, this smoke element here that actually ends where the matte painting begins. Uh, on the Blu-ray, they extended that over the matte painting. Um, the the smoke over uh, the X-wing is very different on the Blu-ray. So I, I'm actually not even sure I will actually use anything from the Blu-ray in this shot, but it's worth having it there just in case. Plus I will at least need it for uh, the timing. Luckily, this is a very static shot, so I should be able to get the missing frames just by repeating some frames at the beginning. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is uh, export this raw version of the 35mm. Uh, Go to sources, 35mm uh, oh, oh 01, raw. Okay, next thing I'll do is uh, go to effects, select sharpen, and sharpen this quite a bit. Uh, the reason for this is because the denoising will uh, soften it again. So uh, to compensate for that, uh, I sharpen first, then denoise. As you can see, we're uh, getting rid of quite a bit of the noise and actually reco recovering some detail. You'll see uh, when I compared this to the original. Now, what this new version of a neat video can also do is dust busting. But because that can introduce artifacts very easily, uh, we will be very careful with it for this path. Let's make a copy of this uh, so you can see the difference. Let's go to 400% magnification and uh, look at that. See the denoising actually recovered some of the detail of the matte painting that was hidden in the noise. Now, like I said, of course, it can create some artifacts, so I have to be very careful with it, and I'm not going to just use the denoised plate. But okay, let's export this now.
Okay, now that we've got this, uh, I'm going to go back to the reduce noise here. And go all the way up. Just to get rid of as much stuff as possible. See, this almost erases this bird here, but uh, what I'm looking for here is basically a clean plate that I can use for painting out the remaining blemishes by hand. Now, this is really aggressive denoising, but uh, it can be very useful for later work. And go to the next 35 millimeter source that I have, which is the uh, Grindhouse version. Which uh, is possibly even dirtier. Uh, as you can see, I have a ProRes uh, lossless master for the Grindhouse version. Again, let's synchronize it. And we'll basically do the same thing for this one. Okay, for this video, I'll actually skip that part because you've already uh, seen me do it with the first 35 millimeter source. Uh, but as you can see, as a result, uh, here we have uh, real three shot one sources. And we've got a frame sequence for the Blu-ray source. We've got a frame sequence for the raw 30, first 35 millimeter source. We've got a lightly cleaned 35 millimeter source number one. We've got a heavily cleaned 35 millimeter source number one. And we have the same thing for uh, the 35 millimeter source number two. Which means I can now go into the task sheet and mark all of these as ready. Now for the 35 millimeter, I have ready raw and ready cleaned, so I can use ready cleaned uh, because when I was planning this I uh, thought I'd have to go into a different program to clean it so I thought I'd have to prepare the the raw one first from Premiere and then go to Avicenth to clean uh, the footage so this is why I had this two-step uh, way uh, now I'll probably just uh, do the raw and clean uh, plates at the same time. So yeah, so this is how the spreadsheet works. And in the next video, uh, we will go into Nuke and I'll show you how I put this shot together uh, using these sources. Well, anyway, uh, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching uh, and may the Schwartz be with you.